Hey! One of the most difficult topics to ever broach would be pure subjectivity. One word out of a very few that I absolutely despise is the word meditation, because it doesn't actually refer to anything specifically. When we use words like happy or sad, everybody knows what we mean, and they do refer to specific moods. When you use the word meditation, it doesn't refer to anything whatsoever. Technically and denotatively, sitting on the toilet and counting the holes in the ceiling is meditation. Um, there are people that go on meditation retreats, and what they do is they practice mindfulness and uh, situational awareness. And it is a type of uh, psychological uh, lethargy, and it does calm people a lot. And people come back from meditation retreats and say, you know, I feel so peaceful and calm. And it'll last about 48 hours, and it's gone. <laughs> You know, if you want to be calm or peaceful for the rest of your life, okay, check yourself into a uh, psychiatric ward, have them put you on a, a Xanax drip. Um, they don't do them anymore. Some countries still do them. Get yourself a, a lobotomy, okay? They could uh, stick you in a pair of uh, Depends, yeah? And they can turn on the Cartoon Network and you'll be so calm. You'll be like a jellyfish for the rest of your days. Um, specifically when referring to recollection, not in the generic sense of what did I eat yesterday, but recollection from the premise of metaphysics. We're talking about anamnesis, sati, smriti. We're talking about the ultimate end goal of apophoticism, the via negativa, which is not only the methodology but also, too, the method itself for disobjectification. By the way, <clears throat> just for sake of edification, I'd like to read off to you a, a technical definition of meditation. Just to prove, you know, what BS the term is, and I can't stand it when anybody uses the term. Meditation, such as mindfulness, or focusing the mind on a particular object. Now, there's a problem. Okay? Focusing on an object. Yeah. Thought or activity. These are also really bad. Objects, thoughts, and activities are the complete opposite, literally 180 degrees opposite, to the premise of disobjectification. The entire end goals, end goal, the modus operandi of all form of hardcore monistic metaphysics, both Greek and Indian, literally the opposite. To train attention and awareness. Attention and awareness are corporeal psychophysical states of empirical existence. The complete opposite, once again, of sati or smriti or anamnesis, or specifically what we would call theurgy, what Plotinus called epistrophe. Yeah? Prohodos is embodiment, and epistrophe is disembodiment. I love it when, like, Greek people will come in and they say, well, protos just means to go. I was like, no, I'm talking about ancient Greek. Well, I'm Greek. Yeah, but you weren't brought up learning ancient Greek, and you're not using it in the proper frame of reference relative to ancient Greek platonic metaphysics. So <laughs> I love it when the Greeks tell me that. It's because you're brought up, you know, knowing Greek doesn't mean you really know anything about uh, ancient Greek. As any Greek will tell you. I know quite a few Greeks, and like, Greeks aren't, don't know this stuff. And, you know, why would they? So, attention, awareness, and achieve a mentally clear and emotionally calm and stable state. Once again, we are talking about, and I am the last person on earth to advocate, uh, you know, doing anything like pills or injections, but we're talking about states of being that you could achieve by, you know, putting yourself on a morphine drip and getting a frontal lobotomy. This has nothing to do with liberation. This is not transcendence. This is not theurgy. This is not disobjectification. And of course, meditation refers to terms like mindfulness. By the way, vipassana, kasati, I translate ancient Pali, by the way. These, these do not mean mindfulness in any way, shape, or form. Mindfulness is the psychological process 
of purposely, this is not my definition, this is the definition of psychological process of purposely bringing one's attention, once again empirical uh, psychophysical states, attention, to experiences occurring in the present moment. Sansara, or hell if you will, sansara means to go round and round, it's kind of like, you know, the wheel of suffering. Sansara is literally an unbroken chain of present moments. The terms mindfulness and meditation, by their actual denotative, i.e. the definition, are the exact, let me, let me state this really emphatically, the exact 180 degree opposite to what the ancient Greeks and Indians taught. Sri Sankaracharya, the principal Upanishads, the Diganikeya, Majimanikeya, Samyuranikeya, Angotarnukeya, Kudakunakeya, comprising the Udana, the Irivutaka, the Surunapara, the Dhammaparnapali, which I translated, by the way, the entirety of which, which is free on archive.org. These are the complete opposite of what the Greeks and Indians taught. People say, well, I feel so calm, you know? I just like feel at one with the world. People do feel calm. They do get genuine effects, but those effects have nothing to do with disobjectification. They have nothing to do with theurgy. They have nothing to do with anamnesis or recollection in the metaphysical sense. Not recollection, once again, of like, what did I eat yesterday for breakfast? Not that kind of recollection. Sati which of course is recollection, the ancient Pali term for recollection. Epistroph, ancient Greek. The anamnesis of what is not known, nor has ever been known, because it is pre-embodiment. It is transcorporeal. It is the noumena itself. The methodology is also the method by which one disobjectifies from that which they see themselves as. Once again, we're talking about the two selves. The self that is seen in the mirror, the psychophysical, i.e. the corporeal aggregates of phenomenality, you know, which Bob, Sue, Larry, man or woman, so on and so forth. That is the empirical self. This sort of uh, trance state, blanking one's mind, meditation, and I, I used to fight the, the Buddhists, which are so incredibly dumb. Literally the most unintelligent group of people on earth, uh, to me anyway, because I've debated them for decades, or Buddhists, because they're so clueless. They don't even study their own texts. And it's okay not to be able to read and translate ancient Pali. But you know, was, you know language has been dead now for 2,000 years. But they literally engage in this Zazen, Shikantaza nonsense. They love to use the word Zen, but they don't even know what the word Zen means. Um, of course, it's been bastardized literally over 1,500 years. The uh, Japanese word Zen comes from the Chinese word Chanma, which comes from the Sanskrit word Dhyanma, which root thereof in ancient Prakrit, i.e. Pali, is Janma, the root of which is Jayati, meaning to burn. So literally, the origin of the term Zen Zen, Chanma, Dhyanma, Janma, i.e. Jayati. Literally means to burn, but, you know, we got a fire here, perfect analogy. To burn what? To burn away objectivity. That is what the original definition is in reference to. To burn away objectivity. For subjective synthesis. Subjective synthesis can only be had by disobjectification. That is theurgy. That is metaphysical recollection. How does one engage in this? You don't engage in it by mental states of mind. Well, okay, this is not me, that is not myself. The most repeated phrase in ancient Pali, way, Pali by the way, is isokaya nami swata, this body is not my soul. Not myself in the reflexive self, because myself, yourself, himself, is refers to a psychophysical person, Bob, Sue, Larry. Okay, not a reflexive, okay? That's not the premise of anamnesis, theurgy. Theurgy would not be, you know, becoming at peace with your empirical self. It's about transcending it. There is no escape of suffering for anybody or any being which is born. It's an absolute impossibility. Anything that has a beginning has an end. That's also a line that was used in the Matrix, by the way, <laughs> that got that 
from ancient Sanskrit and Pali. Anything that has a beginning, Neo, has an end. Remember that line from the Matrix? Well, they took that from the Upanishads and countless other texts say the same thing. The word meditation and the word mindfulness has nothing to do with transcendence ontology or liberation ontology of ancient Greek or ancient Indian. By ancient Indian, I mean Advaita Vedanta, the Upanishads, the Nikayas. These terms have nothing to do with that. If you want to be peaceful, get rich and buy yourself a big house and, you know, lots of butlers, you know, you Get a frontal lobotomy, get put on a morphine drip, and sit in a diaper and watch the Cartoon Network and just drool on yourself. Ugh. You'll never have another care, you know, for as long as you live. That has nothing whatsoever to do with transcendence. It has nothing whatsoever to do with theurgy, disobjectification. These two are so far apart, they are night and day. Black and white. They're not yin and yang, which would be an, an inseparable binary of, the, of, uh, of holism. They are literally the opposite of one another. Meditation and mindfulness do not refer to the methodologies of disobjectification, sati, smriti, anamnesis, epistroph of Plotinus and the Neoplatonists. These have nothing to do with those. That's not my opinion. It's a hardcore, irrefutable fact. Anybody that wants to debate that, I will destroy you. And I do mean that literally, not in a literal sense, but you want to debate it? You haven't got a chance in it. Well, I do mindfulness, and this is what people always do. They used to do this all the time to me. These people in the Zen, they don't want to learn the fact that they've been pissing away their life doing nonsense. Well, I got some fancy robes, and I burn incense, and I sit on my Zafu, and I blank my mind out. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is wonderful. You know, it made you nice and peaceful, but it has nothing to do with transcendence. It has nothing to do with liberation. Liberation of what, from what, and by what means. This notion, let me read you the definition once again of the key words of meditation and mindfulness, which have nothing to do with liberation ontology of the Greeks and Indians. Focusing the mind, particular object. You know, objects are mara, are, are literally the premise of evil. This, that's the stuff you're supposed to burn away by focusing your mind like a laser through the lens of wisdom. That's the stuff you are supposed to ignore and pull yourself back from. But they're talking about concentrating. Literally, the definition of meditation and mindfulness, not my definition, but the definition, is not transcending the crap hole, if you will, these are talking about sticking your head in the toilet and counting the turds and sniffing the smells. That's not only, is that nothing to do with theurgy, it's the complete opposite of that. These people literally don't want to hear that they've been wasting their time doing nonsense. Well, you know, I... I know, I, I, I sit and blank my mind out and I feel so much better, you know, I got stress of the job and the work and, you know, I just, I'm nobody, I'm nothing, I, I've experienced emptiness. <laughs> emptiness is purely conceptual, there's no such thing as emptiness. X is empty of Y, it's relational. Just like a shadow is not a thing, there's no such thing as a shadow. A shadow is not an entity. A shadow is the absence of an entity. Like this is light, yeah, here's light, right? Here's light. Well, here is no light. Well, that's a shadow. No, what you're doing is you're saying that something, something's absence is something, but that's not true. Let's repeat that again. The absence of something is itself something. No, it's not. What you've done is you've reified the concept, the concept of the absence of light, i.e. a shadow. There's no such thing as emptiness. That's what the Zen people love to talk about. Why well, do Zen? It's like, do you know what the definition of Zen is? No. Why is it important? Well, Zen comes from Chana, which comes from the word uh, uh, Dhyana, comes from the word uh, Jana, Pali term, which means uh, Jayati, Jayati, the, the root word, to burn. To burn away what? Kind of like the uh, needle in the haystack. You don't go looking for the needle in the haystack like it's an object. 
It's pure subjectivity. The subject is never an object to be witnessed or to be found. It's like the idiot that left, there's an old parable about this dumbass that, uh, and this is about the soul, you know, people that doesn't deny the soul. The dumbass stepped outside of his house and he looked in his window of his own house. He's like, nobody lives here. <laughs> it's like, well, you, you just stepped outside of your house and looked in and declared nobody lives. The subject is not an object of identification or to be found. This is the methodology and also the method. Transcendence is disobjectification. That is theurgy. That is jayati. It's focusing the, uh, the uh, lens of wisdom like a laser to burn away phenomena, which culminates and leaves the needle, if you will, or pure subjectivity. There's no needle as in, oh, there's the needle. The needle is realized when objectivity is blown away. Yeah? There is no other methodology other than that. But that has nothing to do with meditation and mindfulness. These are not terms that actually refer to anything. Anything relational to the ancient Greeks or to the ancient Indians. Well, I do meditation and it just calms me down. I hear this crap all the time. Well, that's good for you. That's wonderful, you know? I'm glad you're more peaceful. But what you're doing has nothing to do with the ancient... They, they think... Well, I'm doing what the ancient Indian masters taught. It's like, no, you're not. Sure I am. It's like, no. It's not my opinion that you're not. You are not. Yeah. Focusing on objects and consciousness and awareness and uh, trying to make yourself emotionally calm, that has nothing to do with transcendence. I.e., the ancient Greek term epistroph, Eh? Or to the ancient Pali term vimuta, i.e. liberation, transcend the same thing. There's nothing to do with those. They're not connected at all. And anybody that tells you that they are is a fool. And that's not my opinion. That's a fact. Logically and necessitatively so. It's not my opinion. It is a fact. I'm glad it calms you down. But that has nothing to do with liberation. Nothing whatsoever, nor is it even the beginning of same. Have a great weekend.